ESG audits are back. So the CRA took a hiatus from um, auditing anything um, between March 15th and September 30th. So um, that grace period uh, is now over. That doesn't mean you're not going to be audited for things that happen in between that time. Um, what that means is that they just weren't audited because uh, staff was sent home and, and they just didn't have the manpower to do it. Um, but as is evidence this week, um, my firm in particular, we've had two audits, two GST audits or reviews, I like to call them because audit sounds really serious. But I'll tell you the stuff that's coming up that's coming up this week. So we have an issue where our client purchased something uh, in their own personal name and um, their company claimed the GST credits. It is a company expense. It's just the business that sold it to them, um, put it in their personal name rather than in a business name, and the CRA does not like that one bit. So we negotiated and, and we're able to um, still claim those GST ITCs as long as we um, got the vendor to change the name on the invoice, which we did. So that's good. Uh, so that one's all good. Um, and the other one is a little bit of a different scenario. The reason why I think CRA audits people for GST is to catch those that are charging GST, but also not, uh, but not registered or charging GST, claiming income, and maybe not claiming that income. So in this case, we have an invoice um, that was sent in. Uh, there's no GST number on the invoice, which right away, um, I'm a suspect. By law, you are supposed to have a GST number on the invoice. So if there isn't a GST number on the invoice, you technically don't have to pay the GST. But this is how the CRA catches those that are charging GST that, that don't have a GST number that shouldn't be charging, char charging GST. Just because you're Canadian, and Canada has GST, and the services that you provide are GST eligible, does not mean that you charge GST. You also have to be registered. So if you're not registered, do not charge it. So what's likely gonna happen in this scenario is that this person that's charging the GST is going to owe that GST because they will track him down. They will phone him and ask him uh, to pay that money and probably also inquire of what other invoices does he have that he's been charging GST on that, that he's not claiming. Now, the side of it that's that's unknown is whether or not this person is going to, um, whether or not my client is going to be able to claim those ITCs. If the other person complies and pays their GST, there's a chance they might be compliant and, and uh, be, be allowed to claim those ITCs, uh, but they don't have to. So someone who's not registered for GST charges it to somebody else, they pay it. The CRA can deny those ITCs and also charge the person who charges GST. So it's kind of like double taxation, um, which is the worst worst case scenario. The person charging the GST that didn't have a GST number obviously needs to uh, get some advice, uh, talk to some professionals, and hopefully they can get that all sorted out. Um, yeah, so you know, be careful of that. And uh, I hope that helps. And uh, the CRA is uh, not out to get you. They're out to enforce what's supposed to happen. And if you don't know what's supposed to happen, please, please, please talk to your professional, the person that's supposed to be giving you advice. Um, and yeah, try to, you know, try to avoid these, these traps that uh, people fall into. So I hope that helps. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family, take care of your friends, and be well.